let's talk about a thing I like. Before we get started, though, I want to give you a big fat spoiler warning. It's going to be hard to explain what makes this particular thing so special without getting into some of the nitty gritty details. I wouldn't be talking about this in the first place if I didn't think it was worth your time, so please, if you haven't done so already, look down in the description for places you can find your own copy and find out for yourself whether you maybe might like it too. Serenity Rose is a goth comic created by Aaron Alexevich way back in 2003. It chronicles several major life events of the eponymous 20-something-year-old witch and amateur artist, hereafter referred to as Sarah, who resides in the town of Crestfallen, the spookiest little town in the U.S. of A. Serenity Rose the comic is a labor of love. Serenity Rose is unabashedly queer. And like many queer things, Serenity Rose is... just a mess, honestly. I mean, okay, follow me here. Serenity Rose is, all at once, a comic about mental illness, loneliness, goth subculture, anti-consumerism, bullying, friendship, witch hunts both literal and figurative, love, fame, government-sanctioned ethnic cleansing, performance art, wet dreams, again, literal and figurative, that come to life and rip limbs off of tourists, love again, cutesy little magical forest friends, and above all, some good old-fashioned gay shit. At times, the book reads like a decanter for Aaron's musings and anxieties about the state of the world. At others, it feels like a place for him to play with new art styles and breathe life into his coffee-stained napkin doodles. At all times, it feels deeply personal and wholly sincere. And honestly, kind of a mess is exactly what it should be. The comic is kind of a mess because Sarah is kind of a mess. After all, this isn't just a story about her, it's by her. Oh yeah, I probably should have mentioned that earlier. See, within the narrative, the true author of the comic is actually Sarah herself. It's just that the events depicted therein have been relayed to one Aaron Alexevich. The comic serves as a diary of sorts, uh, one that Sarah's therapist advised she start keeping in order to work through the negativity. The reason this series often feels like it's just the author introspecting about their own fears and inadequacies is because, well, diegetically, that's exactly what it is. So, who is Sarah? Who, who is this Serenity Rose? The defining feature of Serenity Rose as a character is the fact that, well, she's a witch. In the world of this comic, witches are extremely rare and often incredibly famous. This means that just about every interaction Sarah has with someone is colored by preconceptions they have about her. Everyone in Crestfallen knows who she is, not simply because she's a witch, but because this town was built on top of an abandoned witch's colony and subsists entirely on revenue from curious tourists. Being the only witch in town, and the youngest of only five witches born in the U.S., Sarah is... kind of a big deal. Ironically, the fact that she's both introverted and sociophobic exacerbates this quite a bit. It's rare to see a witch in the first place, but it's even rarer to see this particular one. So, with that in mind, let's talk about fantastic racism for a second. Sometimes in fiction, a writer may choose to involve some form of allegory for racism, or homophobia, or sexism. But in order to make the topic more palatable, they'll shift from discussion of literal real-life race relations to discussion of race relations between fantasy species. At best, you end up with a Carnival Row scenario where the primary difference between the dominant and subordinate groups is a matter of aesthetics. There may be real cultural or physiological differences, but the main point of tension tends to be a matter of genuine prejudice as opposed to anything grounded in, say, magical ability or past transgressions. At worst, you can end up with a muggle power situation where the race allegory still attempts to portray a dominant-subordinate relationship, much like real racial oppression. But the group that makes up the dominant class ends up being normal humans, while the subordinate class has literal fucking superpowers. When you write yourself into this particular corner, you can very easily find yourself incidentally justifying the oppression of the subordinate group by showing them to be a legitimate demonstrable threat to the dominant group. For example, see Attack on Titan, 
Warhammer 40k, and notably Mark Miller's Civil War. My point here is that writing fantastic racism is pretty hard, and, you know, an amount of it exists in Serenity Rose, no doubt about that. And sometimes, yeah, it veers into muggle power territory. Oddly, what saves this comic in that respect is that it's never centrally about this race allegory necessarily. It's certainly a facet, and it plays a pretty big role in Sarah's formative years, but that's mostly set up. It isn't itself the main thrust of the plot. This works out in Sarah's favor because the comic then gets to be less about neatly packaging the entire concept of racism so we can solve it in an afternoon, and more about how this particular person interacts with a world that has inflicted that kind of trauma on her. What's most interesting to me about the fantastic racism angle, though, is that it's not all slurs and death threats. There's a bit of allegory to subtler forms of racism in there, too. Sarah's witchiness causes people to build a sort of informal cult around her. There are folks who try to cozy up with her because they've constructed an idea in their minds of who she is and what she's like. If you've ever seen that uh, Key and Peele skit where they're at a bar just trying to talk about Game of Thrones and white folks keep making excuses to talk to them, it's kind of like that. For me, this particular aspect of Sarah's life hits home. I'm a black woman who went to several mostly white schools as a kid. An awful lot of the racism I've experienced has actually been from either well-meaning white people who got to learn firsthand that black folks aren't monolithic, or from people who are entirely clueless about how to interact with me without showing their entire ass. Seriously, I, I don't know who needs to hear this right now, but don't touch people's hair without asking, and honestly, probably just don't ask in the first place. I don't really know how much of this race allegory is intentional. There's mention sometimes of witch stereotypes and a brief joke about you thieving witches, but otherwise it's a little more realistic to interpret this aspect of the book as more of a general metaphor for being an outsider. I mean, again, this is a goth comic about goths. Uh, a less incidental and at times explicit reading, though, is that it's about queerness. Toward the end of the first arc, we learn a bit more about a major traumatic event in Sarah's life and how it's directly tied to the fact that she's a lesbian. What's refreshing here, though, is that, well, this comic lets Sarah experience her queerness without ever diverging into outright tragedy porn. A big problem I have with a lot of queer media, particularly when they're created by, you know, cishet folks, is that they can exclusively use abhorrent treatment of queer people as their focal points. Often, media like this portrays gay and trans folks like we're broken, pitiable things. They martyr us to remind themselves of how good they have it and how saintly they are for not being bigots. But with Sarah, things are different. Uh, there's tragedy, sure. Boy, there is plenty of that. And yeah, some of it is directly related to Sarah's sexuality, but... As with the outsider magical racism allegory, the trauma she experiences isn't itself the point. The thesis of Serenity Rose is honestly pretty simple. It's genuinely uplifting to see queerness without it being presented like it's a curse. Aside from the explicitly lesbian aspects of the comic, there's one last bit of queerness I'd like to read into this book. Now, I want to be clear before I start. I think this is all incidental. I think it's pretty gauche to hypothesize about people's identities, so I'd like to take some time to say that, as far as I can tell, Aaron Alexevich is a cisgender heterosexual man. I wouldn't have even brought any of this up if it weren't for the fact that what I'm about to say next is specifically relevant to the curious nature of the authorship of this book. Okay, now that I've thoroughly poisoned the well, if you'll recall, I mentioned earlier that Serenity Rose is a comic book written as a diary of sorts by the main character. Aaron A. is never actually mentioned, introduced, or depicted within the book. We only know that Sarah communicated the story to Aaron because a splash page at the beginning of the book says so. Now, obviously there's a real Aaron Alexevich, I think, but within the text of the book, he's a non-entity. He's functionally a pen name. On its own, it's a pretty inconsequential detail. However, 
The first story arc of the comic takes regular detours to present us with a comic within the comic that is also authored by Serenity Rose. This comic is published in her friend Kelton Zine. Notably, though, she very intentionally does not take credit for the comic. Instead, she writes under a pen name. Okay, again, incidental. Fairly inconsequential. Pretty early on in the series, though, Sarah mentions offhand that she'd like to make a children's book. Cut to 16 years later, after the real Aaron Alexevich has moved on to other projects. He announces, of all things, a horror picture book for kids titled It's Not Scary. He puts the project up on Kickstarter and gets to work. So, full disclosure here, I actually kickstarted that book. My copy finally arrived this past October, and it's wonderful. It's great. I love it. You should go check it out, especially if you have little ones to read it to. One of the coolest things about It's Not Scary is that it's not just an ink and paper book, it's also a mobile app developed by Aaron's wife, Amy Goff. That app uses some really cool technology to bring the world of It's Not Scary to life. Anyway, one of the incentives of the Kickstarter campaign was a short issue of Serenity Rose that crosses over with It's Not Scary. You can imagine how hyped I was. Well, I read the book and I read the comic. In the latter, we learned that the former exists canonically within the world of Serenity Rose. Sarah herself is the true author, but we see that, as with her comic book, this book is attributed to Aaron Alexevich. Sarah has a conversation with her girlfriend about it where she explains that she didn't put her real name on the book because she wants it to stand on its own. She doesn't want people to buy it because the author is famous but because they like the book itself. With that in mind, we have a third instance of Sarah using a pen name, and with that third instance, we can officially call it a pattern. Now, I bring all of this up because, as a trans woman, it really struck me when I realized that Sarah was operating under a professional pseudonym for fear of the repercussions of doing otherwise. I recognize that the connection here is a bit forced, but... I understand what that's like. I don't get to use my real name in professional life because the circumstances of my birth make it dangerous to do so. I have to assume another identity and dress myself in drag because my financial stability depends on it. And while I know in my heart that it's just a coincidence, it genuinely made me cry to see myself reflected like that in something that means so much to me. So that's about it. That's really all I have to say about this comic. Don't get me wrong, there's, there's plenty more to it, but I really think that people should go out and experience it for themselves. Before I get going, though, I wanted to wrap up by quickly mentioning Aaron A.'s other work. In addition to It's Not Scary, Aaron has another killer comic called Eldritch. If you like tentacles and gore, you should check it out. Among other things, Aaron has also done art for the Little Nightmares comic, character design work for both Randy Cunningham, Ninth Grade Ninja, and Avatar The Last Airbender, and... Oh, oh, right, he was the character designer for Invader fucking Zim. Okay, yeah, and I know I buried the lead on that one, but really, it's not the point here. Serenity Rose stands really well on its own. The Zim connection is entirely tangential. If you've ever read the run of Invader Zim comics that started back in 2015, Aaron did a whole mess of art for that, and he even got some writing credits in, too along with, oddly enough, Sam Logan from Sam and Fuzzy. This is a neat little fun fact for you. So yeah, that's about it for my first video. Thanks for sticking through it. <laughs>